Hello and welcome to construction of the Jace Mace tutorial from Arms Armor and Awesome. This project was uh, about one month in total completion time uh, for the entire costume and just shy of probably about uh, 200 hours in the garage uh, for all the uh, props and armor. The tool you see me using to start the video is called a uh, lathe. Uh, here I am actually going to be using uh, insulation foam for uh, home insulation. Uh, for my purposes here I've taken three sections. I've glued them together uh, in the appropriate length and then I uh, started out by doing a turning them basically into one giant uh, cylinder. So now I have one long about six inch round circle uh, that will be turned into the props. Now this actually has three parts built into it. I decided to turn them all at once. It was just easier. Uh, the part closest to the bottom of the screen will be at the bottom of the mace head, and the other two parts will be accents on the hilt, or on the handle. The process is pretty simple. The foam is very, very soft and easily milled. Um, here you can see me uh, measuring, cutting, measuring some more, uh, cutting, measuring. That was all in order to make sure that I had the right diameters uh, per the blueprints that I was working off of. Uh, a lot of this is simply uh, freeform art, a uh, matter of getting it to look right. There's no such thing as the correct shape, just one that looks really, really good. Uh, the lathe was a new uh, new tool that I had not had before and had access to. So in this case, it was a huge boon to uh, the project because of the fact I could make perfectly round objects uh, exceptionally fast. I think total time to mill these out. This was my actual first project I'd ever uh, done other than a few test scrap pieces. Um, total time about two hours on the lathe. Um, and that was me taking my, my sweet, sweet time. You can see that the material works and cleans out very, very easily. Um, it's uh, pretty simple to work with. As it spins, uh, it's spinning right around 900 RPMs. I just barely touch the tool to it, and I chip off the uh, material all the way around it in a perfect circle. So it keeps everything nice and in round, uh, which is a huge benefit for when we're doing these sort of projects. If you've ever tried to do props, prop making before, round objects are usually the hardest to make. So in this case, um, basically it almost feels like I was cheating compared to how I used to have to do this. So we made all three parts initially. Uh, these were once done, hacked out apart, um, and then cleaned up, and that was the, uh, the entire project. Uh, I get a rough shape, and then I come back in, continually check against the blueprints, and I use 220 grit sandpaper uh, in just my hand to clean up all the... Uh, shavings to just make sure it's nice and smooth. We're moving on to creation of the actual mace head. I was working off a set of well-designed blueprints, so it made everything pretty easy. Um, I had one sheet of quarter-inch MDF that formed the skeleton of the mace. Uh, I'll explain this here in a little bit. The mace head consisted of one beam across the center, and then it had two wings on the end that made it kind of look like a TIE fighter. You'll see those all get cut out here in a few minutes. I ended up having to uh, reinforce the mace head uh, because the quarter inch MDF just wasn't strong enough, but that is uh, something you'll see later on here. Once I had the entire thing blocked out, it was pretty quick and easy. Uh, I took it to the table saw freed up the pieces that I needed. Uh, once I get everything cut apart, uh, I go back in and I actually form 8 inch thick channels uh, in the two wing pieces. And you'll see those here in a second when I'm actually working them on the table. The project and the idea was that with those cut in it, it will make a nice clean fit and I will actually increase the amount of surface area I have to glue with. Alright, so using a scroll saw, we're going to actually free out the mace head. Uh, this is just doing uh, scroll work, so I'm cutting out the mace head. This is the center uh, cross portion of the mace head. Um, this is where the handle will mount and some other parts. Alright, here's the two wing pieces once again. Uh, these are being... I'm cleaning out the channels with a hand chisel, quarter inch hand chisel. This ensures that I get a nice, clean, smooth channel in there and that when I go to, go to glue it together, uh, everything stays uh, perfectly square, so it was very important to make sure these were nice and clean. There you go, so assembles nicely. 
back to the lathe. Uh, it's another part of the mace. Uh, these are actually two center discs, and they go in the middle of the mace head. Uh, they have a large gear on them. Uh, they're not really obvious unless you actually look at the mace close up, uh, but they are there, and uh, they are a very key feature of it. So the idea at this point was that I would turn both sides at the same time. Uh, this actually worked out really, really well. Uh, you can see that I do pretty well here, uh, turning across, trying to get my measurements right, make sure that both sides are equal as I'm doing them. Alright, at this point I was cutting the foam that will fit inside the mace. This will build the rest of the uh, portion. This will be what I will be shaping and sanding here in a few minutes. You can see how fast the table saw makes uh, quick work of a, a block of foam. I could put the foam on, I needed to reinforce the mace head. Here you can see, uh, use, again using the scroll saw, I'm basically cutting out an identical template. It's a little bit uh, narrower to fit inside, and I will also have to cut some relief cuts for some other vertical supports and the actual uh, sh uh, shaft of the mace itself. That was already in place and I need to make sure it had room to uh, properly fit. That's the large relief cut right down the center of the mace head there. This was eventually glued and, uh, and clamped in place, and this provided a total thickness of just over a three-quarter inch uh, MDF board to the uh, center of the mace. Uh, provided a very, very strong, rigid skeleton that uh, really helped the, uh, the durability of the mace. Alright, at this point we have a mace completely constructed and we're going to fill it in. Uh, we have filled it in uh, with pink foam insulation. Uh, there's blue and pink, color doesn't really matter, it's kind of matter where you buy it from. The tool I'm using is called a wrap. It's a really, really aggressive file, has a very large piece on it. Uh, but it makes wondrous when it comes to uh, shaping this pink foam. You can see that it leaves a very rough texture, but as soon as you come through with the sandpaper, it uh, cleans right up and leaves a marvelously smooth surface. I prefer the pink color, I find it to be a little bit denser than the blue foam, uh, it just so happens it's what I had on hand at the time, so that's what I went with. At this point I was trying to figure out uh, the proper cuts, proper angles, uh, you'll see remarks through those, and then once it is created and done, I will go through with the wrap and remove 90% of the mace, that was actually quite a lot of material removed each. Uh, mace surface needed to be uh, hand tooled. The process was pretty simple. Uh, it was make the marks on each end and then remove the material until those two marks are uh, flush with the rest of the material. You can see that I work, kind of work very methodically, a little bit at a time, one surface at a time until I get all the way completed. I didn't want to be jumping around uh, lest I screw something up just because of where I put my hand or a uh, straight of the mark or something like that. Make sure to take time and keep your workspace clean. Make sure you're running a banking area once in a while. This material does get kind of messy, uh, but you know that's the nature of the, the hobby, unfortunately.
I spent a lot of time on this. Uh, total lap, uh, I want to say just about four to six hours, somewhere in there. Um, it was uh, straight work. I put on some music and just turned two on it. It was uh, kind of relaxing once I got into the swing of it because it was just continually replicate uh, side after side. So, as always, workspace clean. Um, because I'm using hand tools, obviously there's no real PPE here. I'm not worried about uh, earmuffs or, or things getting thrown up in my eye, which is kind of one of the reasons I prefer using hand tools anyway. The finished surface of the mace uh, was pretty good. Um, I tried to do my best to make it as smooth as possible uh, with just sandpaper and the foam. You'll only get so good, unfortunately that's just the nature of the foam itself. Uh, it will only stand down so fine and so smooth. The real issue here is that it will always be slightly dentable or damageable. And the plan from the start was to cover the entire uh, mace head in a epoxy resin with, uh, with a cloth. For, uh, for support. This will come through and uh, I think I have good video of that here in the uh, next portion. So we will uh, get to that when we get there. Right now we're still shaping up the head to see how we're making good progress. I left the flat part of the other side. I haven't done it yet. That will be the last piece that I do. Uh, this was to ensure that I had good, stable work surface uh, when I was working on the rest of the base. I didn't want to narrow both ends and then end up finding it wobbly on me. Once again, always block out to the best of your abilities. And then, uh, like I said, I always use my hand and uh, just slow and methodical. And the RAS makes pretty quick work of this stuff. So if you don't have one, they're about five bucks at your local hardware store. All right, that's pretty much going to finish up this uh, portion of the tutorial. There'll be a few more coming, and we'll see where it ends. As always, this is Arms Armor and Awesome. Find us at AAACosplay.com.